Good morning, brothers, sisters, and friends. We're going to start our morning worship service in about two minutes. I'd like to encourage everyone to move forward and take a seat and bring our fellowships to, to, to the front. Amen. Good morning, brothers, and sisters, and friends. Welcome to the Sunday worship service of the Central Christian Church. It is so good to see all of you here today. Let's give a round of applause and encourage one another to really worship God today. Amen. And if you have visitors visiting us for the first time today, I hope that you feel the love of God and the fellowship in this place. Today, our brother Edward will lead us in opening prayer. And we'll be hearing from our brother Harlem. We'll be preaching the word. Calvin Yo will be sharing his thoughts, helping us to meditate on the cross. We are here to worship the Lord. And our God, our Master, is worthy of all our praises and all glory to Him. He's the source of our joy, our peace, and our hope. I'd like to invite every one of us to stand up as I read a few verses today. In Psalms 95, verse 1, it reads, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before Him with thanksgiving and extol Him with music and song. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. In His hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belongs to Him. The sea is His, for He made it, and His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Master, for He is our God. For we are the people of His pasture, the flock under His care. Today, we're going to worship God with our voices. And we have a few special guests with us today. We have Robert, we have May, we have Selah, and we have Jordan on the keyboard. They are from Jakarta and they are really going to worship together with us. Let's give them all the attention. Amen. Let's prepare our heart to worship God. Amen. You've 
search much deeper within through the way things appear you're looking into my heart i'm coming back to Sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. King of endless words. No one could express how much you deserve. Oh, no one we can put, and all I have is yours. Every single breath, we'll bring you more than a song. I'll bring you. You search, you search much deeper within. Through the way things happen, you're looking into my heart. Oh, I'm coming back. It's all about you, it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. Oh, oh. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all I'm about coming you. back, I'm coming back to the heart of Worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming. Sing this song. I'm coming back. Oh, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Well, it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I made. Well, it's all about you. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's 
all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Amen. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. been so with every breath that I am made but, oh I will see of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God oh my the goodness of God. Your goodness is running out, is running out to me. Your goodness your goodness is running out, is running out to me. With my life laid down, surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, is running out to me. My life laid down, I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out for me. Your goodness, your goodness is running out, it's running out for me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out for me. With my life laid out, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, my life. Of the goodness of God, oh my life, oh my life, you have been, 
You have been faithful. You have been so good to me. The goodness of God, I will see. I will see. Of the goodness of God, I will see. I will see. Of the goodness of God. Amen, brothers and sisters. God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. Let's give the warmest hug to around you, in front of you. Let's count 10 people. 10 people. 10 person. Come on. Are you ready to praise God? All right, let's sing this song. Lord, you are God. Let's get your hands together. Come on. Lord, you are so good. Your goodness in our lives. Sing with us. Ooh, oh, oh, oh. Ooh, oh, oh. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, sing it out. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Sing it one more time, Lord, you are good. Come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth yes, forever. Yes, Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. People from every nation. People from every nation and town, from generation hey! to generation, we worship you. Come on, sing it out with your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we worship you for who you are. For who you are. And we worship you. Lord, you are good. Come on. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Lord, you are so good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endure forever. Let's gather people from every nation. People from every nation and town. From generation Let's go. to generation. We worship. You are good. Amen. Clap your hands if you believe God is good for your life. Together say it. God, you are good. Come on. And you are good all the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. You are good. Let's go. All the time. All the time. And you are good. You are good all the time, all the time. You are good, 
You are good. All now, time, sisters all only. Time, sisters only. Get ready. You are good. You are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. You are good. All right. All the time. Brothers. All the time. Prove that God is you good in your life. Good. Come on. And you are good. You are good. You are good. You are good all the time. All the time. You are good. People from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation. Again, people from every nation. People from every nation and tongue. From generation to generation. We worship you. Yes, we worship only you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you for who you are. We worship you. We worship you. Sing hallelujah. 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 We worship you for who you are. Let's go. Brothers and sisters. Hi, good morning, church. I'm Edward from the Parents Ministry, and I would like to open the prayer with a passage from Isaiah 40:31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let us all bow down our heads and pray. Lord God, the Father, we come before you seeking our strength and for your renewal. Your word reminds us that those who put their hope in you will find their strength restored. Just as the eagles effortly fly in the sky, we long to rise above the challenges of our everyday lives. We trust in your promise that when we turn to you, you will grant us the strength to run our race without growing weary. Dear God the Father, we confess that there are times when we feel weak, exhausted, burdened by the daily lives. We ask for your strength to infuse every fiber of our being. In those moments when we feel overwhelmed, may we find solace and rest in your presence. In our moments of doubt and discouragement, remind us of your faithfulness, dear Lord God the Father. May we find encouragement in your presence and those strength from your unwavering love. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be empowered to face each day with confidence and trust in your guidance. Father, we thank you for being our refuge, our stronghold, and our source of strength. Help us to live in the assurance that we can do all those things in the name of Jesus. May our families, friends, and church be strengthened and uplifted by the power of your presence and find renewed strength to face each day with hope and confidence. We pray for all of this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Let's thank Brother Edward for leading us in prayer. God is good. Amen? God is good. Can we say to each other here, God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. Happy Sunday, church. It's great to be here, and I want us to thank uh, everyone that has been really preparing the whole service so that today we can worship God together. Let's thank them, okay? Thank the worship ministry. Thanks the ushers. Thank you for the AV, brothers and sisters. And this morning, I met with the brothers and sisters, the SKK ministry, serving our children. I mean, just so great to see the brothers and sisters with such a great heart for God and for each other here. So I think, I think we cannot take this for granted. Amen? That's why the name of my sermon today, the title is, Don't Forget. Don't forget, even though you're aging. Especially God. Don't forget God. You know, I used to rely on Vanya when it comes to name. As we get aging and getting older, I realize when nowadays, if I come to Vanya, and, what is that sister's name? She's like, wait a minute. She will look at her phone. <laughs> and her phone right now has a name, not just first name and last name. Now, the husband and the wife's name, or the wife's name and the husband's name. And then she will pick up you know, the names, all that. Now, that was like a few years ago. Now, if I ask Vanya, Vanya is like, I don't know. Even when she tried to search, she's, it's not there, you know. <laughs> so we realize we are, we are aging. And sometimes you go to a place, you know, you, you call them bro and sis. That is actually the easiest way. Yeah. Hi, bro. Hi, sis. But some places, they're quite naughty, you know. They will come to me and it's like, bro, what's my name? <laughs> Have you ever experienced that? <laughs> what's your name? I said, bro, to be honest, I forgot your name. Can you please tell me? And you need to tell me right now maybe 10 times. You know, I, 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 I went to Chinese ministry and preach over there. There are many brothers and sisters. It is so difficult. So difficult to remember the name, especially in Chinese, you know. So I, I, I'll ask them, what is your uh, English name? Okay, they will tell me. that e It's easier, Jackie. It's easier. Rather than Chung Ching Kwan, you know. <laughs> so, but anyway, it is just, you know, this is something that, that happened as you're aging. But the forgetfulness that will be Learning together this morning has nothing to do with aging. This forgetfulness has to do with the goodness that happened in our life. Because life is good. And we start forgetting God. And that's exactly the warning that Moses addressed to the young generation before they enter the promised land. And I want to thank the few brothers and sisters here, they have been really working on a material for a quiet time. Isn't it awesome? Let's thank them, okay? Let's thank our brother, Shuhi, uh, Sister Pat, uh, Viona, and then Yucho. These are the four brothers and sisters that really work in the team, and, 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 and we have another team that really preparing for the next month, and we're just excited to see the brothers and sisters using their gift, using their passion for that. So it will really help us and I, I don't want us to ever forget them and take them for granted. That's why I want to mention even in the early, you know, of our time here. So don't forget God. And, and I, I wanted to know, I, probably you already know, that this book is called Deuteronomy. Basically, it means the second law. Okay? Second law is not like another kind of law <laughs> that was given in Sinai. But basically the same law, but is given now for the second generation. Because the previous generation already died. Except Joshua, Caleb, and of course Moses. And so this is like the last few weeks of Moses' life. So I could imagine 
that he, he would come, he addressed the people. After that, he went back to his camp and he started writing it down. So it's like in the form of sermon. Then after that, he wrote it down. Then he comes to the second section. Then he preached about it. And after that, he went back and he wrote it down. And the third time he came, he preached about it and he wrote it down. So basically, if you look at it, overall, out of 34 chapters, you can divide it into like three time period. One is the past. He reminded this young generation about the past. That's the first three chapters. And after that, he started talking about the present. Before you enter the, the, the land, I want to remind you what needs to happen. So he started giving this instruction, this regulation to them. But he doesn't want them to look at it just a regulation. But this is something that if they leave it presently, they will help them. So that was like from chapter 4 to 26. Then the rest of it is basically when you already entered the land. This is for the future. I want you to understand God wants you to have all the blessing. But if you do not really obey that, instead of blessing, you're going to get the curse. So that's until the end of Deuteronomy 34. So I, I, I really encourage us to really take bite by bite every day and digest that. You might not be able to finish the whole 34 chapters. That's okay. But it's a good, it's a good thing for us to really come to God daily and just take a little chunk and every little chunk and make it a habit that every day we really come to God. Amen? So, I want to start by reading Deuteronomy 6. I don't think I can cover all the 20 two chapters, but I'm going to just take and focus on few things that is important, especially regarding do not forget. So Deuteronomy 6 verse 10, when the Lord your God brings you into the land, he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, Houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, when you experience all this goodness, when life is good, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of land of slavery. I just want you to imagine here that you are so blessed. We're all very blessed here in Singapore. Yeah. Taylor Swift only wants to come to Singapore. That's right, bro. Look at how smart your country is, how smart your MP is. Indonesia got to learn from Singapore. Six days, Taylor Swift. The flight from Jakarta to Singapore is full. The price is unbelievable. People are willing to pay for the hotel three times, four times more. That brings so much income for Singapore. God bless Singapore. <laughs> I'm happy for you. I'm not jealous at all. If our government is jealous, that is their thing, okay? But, but they need to learn from Singapore. But what I'm trying to say is sometimes all the things that we have, we can take it for granted. You know, sometimes it saddens me when I'm in the, in the taxi and the taxi driver will complain about Singapore. You understand what I'm talking about? I said, so many things that you can be grateful for. So many good things. We are blessed here. And let me ask you, do you thank God for all the goodness that you have in your life? I go everywhere. Man, life is good. Life is good. Now, I, that's another lesson talking about why when life is good, people are stressful. That's another lesson. But from here we know that it's a lack of gratitude that made people depressed. Studies have shown the more you're grateful, the happier you are and the less stressful you are in your life. 
the more content you are in your life. So this is, this is so, so important. Can you imagine in Singapore, let's say you have such a great life, and all of a sudden, another group of people, another de- nation came in and throw you out of Singapore. And all of a sudden, start occupying your city that you built. All of a sudden, they start going to your HDB. And you are out of that. And then all of a sudden, start going to, 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 uh, to, to your well and get things that, that they did not even dig or dug. And then start getting all the food Eating all kind of vegetables that they did not even plan. Let me ask you, how would you feel? How would you feel if this happened to Singapore? You got the answer? How do you feel? Don't look at me blank, you know. How did you feel? I'm not just talking about something, oh, just imagine. This is exactly what happened in Canaan. This was exactly God's purpose. This was exactly God's plan. Because how much he loved the Israelites, how much he remembered his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He said, you know what? I'm going to fulfill my promise. And all of a sudden, these people come in, grab the houses, grab the fortified city, get everything, the furnished house. Sometimes you rent a house, it's unfurnished. This is furnished, including TV, LCD. They have everything. This is how good God is towards the nation of Israel. But yet, they forgot God. So I do not want us to forget it. And there are three things that we'll be learning today. How we will avoid the danger of forgetting God. Firstly, stay grateful. Stay grateful. Before I even start talking about it, let me... Let, Let me ask you, how grateful are you? How grateful are you? Oh, bro, I'm very grateful. Before I eat, I pray. I thank God. Let me ask you, how about after you eat? Do you still thank God? Do you still thank God? Do you do that? Because that is just a just a norm, just a habit, because we are a Christian, right? We're supposed to be praying before we eat. But when you pray that, you still pray with gratitude? Is that out of gratitude that you, you say thank you, God? When you wake up in the morning, you know, one day I was having a quiet time, and I was studying about gratitude, and it really hit me, because I would start on my day going to God and thank God, praise Him for everything, but then you know what? At night, my prayer is like, God, I'm tired. I want to sleep. Looking forward to see you tomorrow. I did not even spend 10 minutes or 5 minutes to even thank God for what he has done, what he has provided for me the whole day. I was so convicted. And I was like, I praise God, thank God, before the day begins. But after the day is over, I did not thank Him. Stay grateful. How grateful are you? Let's learn from the book of Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 10, I'm going to focus mostly in chapter 8. It says, When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land He has given you. They have not entered the land yet. But Moses already precautions them and telling them, if you go in and have a good life, please thank God. Praise God. 
Be grateful. Stay grateful. You look at the context of it, how can we practically learn to be grateful in our daily life? It said in verse 2, the previous verse before that, as a context for that verse 10. He said, remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep His commands. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. This is so important. Even Jesus quoted that. This is the book of Deuteronomy is the most quoted book from the Old Testament. Because it's so important. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. The first thing that God says, you know what? Remember, what is it? There's a something about our memory. There's something about our memory of the past that was so important, and we need to recall that. You know, studies have shown that actually we can remember everything. Everything. No one actually forget anything. But the problem is when you recall that as you're aging, as you hardly think or rarely think about it, then it is harder for you to recall that. You go back to that storage in your brain, in your memory, it's harder. That's why it, it takes time for you, oh, let me think about it. Sometimes it will take a few days. Because of that, God says, I, I built something in your brain to remember everything. But the thing is, would you recall it and keep recalling it and keep recalling it? Will you continue stimulating your brain? Research have shown, even for us, tapping the finger like this, within four weeks, it expands your brain. People now are already studying about neuroplasticity, how the brain can even expand. And there are many ways to stimulate our brain. This is one of the ways for you to go back Go back. So many marketing people right now tap into this. So many people try to sell stuff, tap into this. Especially the older people, they bring back the, the nostalgic memory, tap into that. They start selling this vintage, even remake of the album. Taylor Swift remake the album as well. To bring back the memory from the past. It's sold out, it's great. You know what I'm talking about. Now, if the world really tap into that, let me ask you, as a Christian, are we tapping into that? Are we really, really taking God's word to our heart and said, remember, remember what? Is he bring them to the past? He said, I want you to, to remember. What is it that you remember? I want you to go back to the past, not to dwell on it, but for you to go back to the past, reflect on it, and build your life based on what happened in the past. There's so many things that we can learn from the past. And he starts talking about God led you all the way in the desert these 40 years. God led you during the hard time. You got to remember that. Yes, it took 40 years, but who is leading you? Satan? Yourself? No, God. God give you a pillar of fire. It's, it's every day over there. God give you manna for 40 years. How did you get that? Oh, God, I am having a hard times, hard life, difficult time. Yes, but God was leading you. Never forget that. When you go through a difficult time, do you really believe that God is still leading you. He never leaves you. He never forsaken you. Do you really believe that? We got to remember because sometimes in a difficult time, we feel like God left us. That's why Moses said, I want you to remember, looking back at the past, what happened. That even during a hard time, God is there leading you. And then he said, to humble you and to test you in order to know what was in your heart. God will test you sometime. God will test you sometime. 
Now, does it mean that God doesn't know what is in my heart, in your heart? God already knows. God knows my heart. But the reason God tests me so that I, myself, is aware of my heart. And I start getting to know my heart. Then you will know your heart. Then you'll realize, wow, my heart has been ungrateful. God tests that sometimes. God doesn't test us all the time, but God tests us sometimes. He said, he humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers have known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone. To test you whether you really believe and depending on God's word. Even in a difficult time, even though it doesn't make sense, even though you don't see it yet, but you still cling on and really trust in God's word. God is testing us. And not only that, he said, your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. You know what? We don't need to shop anything for 40 years. Can you imagine you wear the same shirt for 40 years and still look new? That means God provides and God keeps you all the time. Please remember, yes, you're going through a hard time, but God is there. Yes, God will test you sometime. Don't complain. It's good for your heart. But God is always there for 40 years. Look at your sandal. Look at your shirt. Anything? That is kind of like going down? No, because God is there all the time. Now, this happened to the Israelites. I want you to take the time this week to go back and start seeing and remembering what God has done in the past. You know what? God doesn't want you to dwell in the past. God does, but God also doesn't want you to abandon the past. Does it make sense? But you got to remember the past, reflect on it, and build your life in the presence right now and for the future based on what you learned from the past. How many of us really looking back and take the past as something that we can learn from? What I often find is Christians like to go and quote the past, but they did not learn from the past. They, 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 they do not make any progress from the past, but they just like to stuck in the past. The thing that they say is this, oh, when I was baptized 30 years ago. Okay, then? That's the only good news I have. Bro, you know what? 10 years ago, I was so jealous for God. I was like serving, okay? They use that to blame the current situation. That is not remembering the past for you to move on. They're still stuck in the past. But what, what should happen is, bro, you know this is what happened, and I know during that time, God allowed that for me to see my heart, to see my sinful nature, for God to bring up what needs to happen in my life, in my family, in this church. You know what? I realized that. I am so grateful that even during that difficult time, God is always there. How do I know? This is what happened. This is what happened. Look at this. I still have an amazing job. I still get promoted. Look at this. My family. I see. This is the kind of people that I know, these are the kind of people that stay grateful. Because they will look back at the past and build on the past and never stay in the past. And then after that, he said, you know, I'll, I'll skip this, okay? But let me, let me read it because there's, there's many verses that we don't have time. But I'm going to just focus. You can take the verse. You can get the slide. But look at this. He start looking at uh, Deuteronomy 1. If you look at Deuteronomy 1, the first three chapters basically looking back at the past, you got to remember the very reason why it took you 40 years. Not because God just want to create pain in you. It is your own doing. God is disciplining you because you disbelieve God. Because he says here, in spite of this, you did not trust in the Lord your God. The problem of the Israelites, the past generation, was they did not have faith. In fact, book of Hebrew, 
4 talks about how much they know God's promise, but God's promise and the message, they heard what was no value of them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. So many people are just excited with promise, but somehow they did not combine it. They did not mix it with faith. That was what happened to the past generation of the Israelites because they know the promise. They can even quote the promise towards Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the problem is they themselves take God's promise and take God's word as of no value. That's a problem. And God wants to show to them, this is your big problem. Let me ask you, what was your big problem right now? What is the big issue? What is the root issue in our lives? They make us not grateful in our lives. And then after that, after you learn from the past, I want you to live in the present. And that's, he, he, he used the present tense here. In verse 5, he says, Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. When you, hear the, when you hear the word discipline, let me ask you, are you excited about it? Or are you not excited about it? How many of you are grateful that your parents disciplined you? Of course, some of the way they disciplined was not right. One of the things that I'm so grateful, my daughters until today, two of my daughters will come to Vanya and I and said, Dad and Mom, when they look at other children, right? It was like, like monster. <laughs> I don't know how many times our daughters will come, Mom and Dad, thank you. He said, thank you for what? Thanks for disciplining us. Because we could not imagine how our life's going to be like that. We are not judging them, but we just look at ourselves. How grateful we are that you discipline us. You know, discipline is something that God used to help us, to make us better. Does it make sense? And it says, know that in your heart. And, and you got to know it. It's not like something, oh, why, why hard times happen to me? No, you got to know it in your heart all the time. you got to know it. When things happen in my life, something, I don't go and blame people. I don't try to make an excuse. I, I want to quit. I want to look at it. It's like, God, what is it that you're trying to speak to me now? Why? Why these things happen? Why these things happen? What is it? Please tell me. Because I know in my heart that you love me. I know in your heart that you want the best happening in my life. How are you doing right now, present? Don't just dwell in the past. Just talk about your stories five years ago, ten years ago. Talk about what is God doing in your life right now. Do you have recollection? Can you recall anything that just happened right now in your life? Can you recall God's goodness? Can you be grateful of what happened to your life last night? I'm not talking about five years ago. I'm talking about even last night, even last, the last one week when it's presently happening in your life. Can you be grateful right now with all the things that's happening in the church right now? How many of us will go up the room being grateful, thankful because of what God provides for us right now? Do you know in your heart? Lastly, he said, you're going to be looking forward to the future. Even Philippians 3 talks about it. You know, no athletes will win the race if they keep looking back. As a swimmer, I was trained, do not worry about other people. Don't look back because I make a mistake one time. When I swim, I look back and I keep looking back and the guy just go, you know. And just, just beat me. And I learned a lesson. My coach is like, okay, stay focused. That was even before I know Philippians 3. He said, just focus, 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 looking forward. Do not go and keep looking back. That has its own place for you to look back. But there are times after you reflect, it's important for you to live in the present, but also for you to look forward into the future. In verse 6, it said, Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in His ways and revering Him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. A land of streams and pools of water, springs flowing, everything. This is the future tense that Moses is using here. 
This is about the future. You have not entered the land. But you've got to observe the law and anticipating what's going to happen in your life. You know, one of the things I really like as, as a Christian, and I enjoyed so much, I enjoyed so much, is when I read and study the scripture, I will ask myself, has this happened, has this happened in my life? When I look at it, it's like, oh, not yet. If it's already happened, I want to go back, I want to learn from it. And then I said, is it happening right now in my life? If it's happening in my life, I got to really <clears throat> be sure and believe <clears throat> God is really working in my life. I got to really be sensitive about it. But one of the things I really like is anticipating. Even sometimes before I meet someone, even before I, I, I meet with a certain group, even before we, we do something big for the church, that's in our vision, that's in our goal. I spent time to anticipate it. I look at the verse, I said, God, this has not happened in my life, but I want this to happen. I want this to happen. I have a color in my Bible, word by word in the Bible, that I anticipate. Some of them a few years later, some of them a few months later, some of them a few weeks later, some of them just a day. And I look at it, and every time I see that, I'm like, God, you're awesome. You know, we're praying to be able to have a training center in, in, in Jakarta. We pray about it. And I even remember, you know, bringing the group of, of leaders. We're like, God, we just want to have this. This is a nice place. We want to have that. And you know what? A few months ago, we spent time with someone here in Singapore. He said, you know what? I have a piece of land. I, I, we want to make it something. What do you think? Bunny and I look at each other. This is something that we look in the Bible. We're excited about it. We pray specifically. And God sent the person. And he said, you know what? You guys want to build a training center? You guys want to heal family? Amen. You know what? I know you guys don't have money. I'll come up with the money. And on top of that, you know what? You don't have to make it profitable. I'll come with the cost. I will cover that. And you just keep talking about it. We're like, wow. It's amazing. It's amazing when you're looking forward. You take God's word and you know that has not come. You have not experienced that, but you're anticipating that. For that to happen. You know what? Even before that happened, you're grateful about it. And when that happened, you're like, God, you are amazing. To me personally, it's either no or not yet. A lot of it is not yet. Because if you really train yourself to be in God's word, you're not going to go and hallucinating and start, start putting your will. You know God's will. But the thing is, you have not seen into reality yet. But, but, but you know this God's will. And if that's not happening one month, if that's not happening in one year, three years, that's okay. you got to keep anticipating because it's still not yet. Because God is preparing you. God knows something is not, still not ready in the church. Something is still not ready in your small group. God said, you know what? But this is what I'm going to do. This is my promise to you. Are you anticipating? Even for us to anticipate, that really helps us to be grateful. For God. Amen? So not just looking at the past, present, but also look forward to the future. The second one is stay in the Word. You know, in Deuteronomy 8 verse 11, it says, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord your God, failing to observe His commands, His laws, and His decrees that I'm giving you this day. we got to stay in the Word. This is when, when people read, read, read this verse, right? Observe his command, his laws, and his decrees, people get stressed out. I want to give you a, a perspective here. When my, 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 my children were still very little, we brought them to the pool. And I'm always grateful. I, I will come to the manager or the guy that's, that, that's actually taking care of the safetyness of the children. I'll come to them. I said, Thank you for providing that fence over there. I said, thank you. You know why? 
because that fans, my, 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 my daughters, like, especially Athena, would be like running around, just go. It's very dangerous. Uh, we try to keep our eyes over there. You know how many accidents already that happen. The parents lose their children because their children just go, you know, and, and, and just like drown in the pool. No, but, but, but I could see that, that, that my, my, my children, when they were little, they look at the fans, they're like, mm, why, why I have these fans? Why, why, why? Hello, that fans is not to, to take your freedom. That fans is to save you. It's to save you. Same thing, God gave his word to save you and me. It's to save you and me. So, do you really believe that? That's why it says in Deuteronomy 6, verse 1 to 4, it said, These are the commands, you Christian the Lord, the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe. Pay attention, please. He said, by keeping all these decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. This is to save you, to give you a long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly. It's all good purpose of God. It is to save you. It's to make you go well. It is to make you increase greatly. And then he said, O Israel, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Do not believe other God. This is Shema. For the Jews, this is Shema. Twice a year in the synagogue until today, they will recite that. Because for them, this is Shema. This is something that is so important. Hear, O Israel, that the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Please do not listen to any other God. Please listen to this only one. Because He is the only one who can save you. He is the only one who has the best interest for you now, yesterday, now and forever. That's who He is. But do you trust Him? You know, when you accept the law, when you observe and when you start reading and studying God's Word, I hope you don't get bored of it. I hope it builds you to keep trusting God. It builds your trust in God. I hope that's happened. You know, th there's a study, and, 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 and psychologists, even counselor, has been calling this a circle of security. This is how you build trust in the children. The, the circle is like this. The child recognizes the unmet need. Let's say he's, 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 he or she is hungry. He's like, oh, he starts crying and all that. Then the child expresses the need, right? Crying or whatever. Then three, the parents meet the need. Give the child food. When that response happened, you know what happened to the children? The child learns to trust his or her parents. Then the cycle will start again. He has other need. But when the response is not there, the child learns to not trust that person. When you study and observe the Word of God, I want you to define what is that need in you. What is that need? I'm not talking about what is that want, what you want. What is that need in you? Then after that, express, learn to express. Many people are like, oh, why God like that? I said, have you expressed your need? And see if the good father that we have will provide that to you. In my life, as a Christian, as a disciple now, it's already 32 years. Let me tell you, God is amazing. He met every need that I have. In fact, he already met the needs that I have not even encountered that I needed. <laughs> He's already ahead of me. He's providing that. And when you observe the law, I hope when you read your scripture in the morning, I hope you are like, wow, God, I can really trust you. You are amazing because you meet my needs. I can really trust you. Now let me ask you, after being a Christian for quite some time, do you really trust God more? Because if you really observe God's word, you will trust him. Even difficult time, you will still trust in him. Even during difficult time, you will still asking him, you're still needing him. That will happen. You will be very hopeful in your life. You are not a pessimistic 
person. You're not someone who is negative. You're someone that always trusts God because you know what His Word says. How much time do you really spend on it? You know, have you ever had a situation that you, you, you really convict you after you have a quiet time? I have. And I think, I believe God really speak to me, Harlem. You take my word for granted. You know, after I have my quiet time, sometimes I have, I have appointment, right? So after that, I go, go for appointment. When I go for appointment, this is, a, this is something, a habit that I, I, I put in my life. I will go away, and then I'll ask, what did I read? What did I learn just now? You know what? In my mind, blank, you know? Can you imagine after 30 minutes? Then I went away because of busyness, right? <laughs> and then I asked, what, what, how long, what, what did you get out of it? What did you learn? What is it that God speak to you? Uh, well, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, you know, <laughs> this is a general one. Yeah. There are times in my life like that, and I, you know, I went to that, that, that appointment. I said, can I share with you? I read a passage this morning and not even one minute after that I forgot what I read I said would you give me 15 minutes because I know important our meeting is important but I I don't have confidence that even I can help you today or it's much help because let me tell you the one that can help you is God you got to trust God I, I, you know what I can't help you because I don't even trust God's word right now. I forgot the word easily. So I'll take 10, 15 minutes, go back again, be reminded again, and really see, wow, I miss it. Have you ever had that experience in your life? Did you just read, and how dare you just forgot what you read? You know what, what, what God convict me of? Harlem, you just read it because that's your routine. You read it because you are a pastor, right? So you've got to read it, right? You read it just, I, I'm so convicted. And let me tell you, it happened again and again. But as I was like really taking that more seriously, the more I really take the time to really trust God's word, I will ask, what is it that I really believe now? Because our life as a Christian is about belief, about what, uh, what, what, what I have faith in. It's not about what I do. It's about what I have faith in. So I'll ask myself, what do I really believe from what I read today? Do I really trust God? That this is who he is? This is what he, he, he will do? This is what he promised? Do I really believe that? Are you with me here? So it's not just trusting. When you observe, it helps you to love God's word and love him. Because in Deuteronomy verse 4 to 9, it said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart. Please, with all your heart, with your sincere heart, and with all your soul. Please, our soul is very selfish. So it's a time for me when I observe that it helps me to not focus about my feeling and, and, and let my feeling drive me or to let what my mind, my will is driving me. But I'm like, God, thank you. Your word helped me to be selfless because my soul is selfish every day and I need to deny that. I got to take that so that I have this selfless heart. Then with all your strength, God, I want to have a strong will based on what your will is. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your heart. Harlem, before you teach that to other people, you got to have that conviction yourself. It has to be in you. With our children, it's so important for us to have that conviction before you even teach your children. And if you teach your children, tell them, you know what, that's still not in my heart yet. That's still not my conviction. But that's the right thing to do. Please be praying for daddy. Please be praying for papa. Because I need to be able to have that conviction over here. You say, impress them on your children. You not just, just have conviction, but now you do it consistently. Impress that. You cannot just do it one day. Keep doing that over and over and over and over. Do it consistently. When you sit down at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up, do it conversationally. You go, make it become part of your life. 
That's one, one of the strengths of Vanya. I learned this a lot from Vanya. Because Vanya, not just having God's, God's in her radar only when she has a quiet time. I remember when we go out and Vanya would be like, look at the cloud, look at this, look at the situation, look at the left and right, look at that. And you would just connect God's truth, connect Bible. And she makes it in a casual conversation. For me, I prepare the devotional for my children, and I'll just do the devotional in that five minutes. But it's not conversationally. You know, when this has become part of your life because you stay in the Word, let me tell you, wherever you go, you talk about it. Not because you're a, you're a religious person. You talk about it because that's already become part of your life. It's your lifestyle. Wherever you go, whether, you, you, whether in good season or out of season, whether you meet someone who is in the church or someone who is not in the church, it's automatically come out from you. Because you stay in the Word so much that it's become your DNA, that becomes your lifestyle that is really in you. And then it says, tie them as the symbols on your hands and bind them on your forehead. Write them on the door frames of your house and your gates. Why was this so extreme? And then, sadly, you see the Jews today, they go, they really tie it on their hands, put it on their forehead, all that. It becomes more a symbol, become very religious about it. But what God is trying to say here, you got to stay in the Word, you got to love the Word so much, and you got to make it so outstanding, so conspicuously, so that people around you could see that your hand, the skill that you have, whatever you do is God's doing it. That everything that comes from your head is not your opinion, but it is God's will. And this is what God wants in your life. And whatever you feel, whenever you go out, whatever you do, you got to make it so outstanding so people could see that you love God. That's the reason you observe the law. So please don't look at it as regulation. Look at it as something that God is so amazing. I, I, I can keep trusting Him. I can keep loving Him. That's what God really wants you to have. Are you with me here, church? This one. I don't know if you know this. This is a Tr Randall Truman. I watched the video about him a few years ago, and I was like, wow. Because it, it really helps me to see Deuteronomy, because in Deuteronomy, God says, you got to break it, you got to burn it, you got to throw up, you got to cut down all these detestable things, all this worship of other false gods. Take that down, kill it. Even in the book of Hebrew, Hebrew 4, you know, the word of God is what? Active, sharp. And, 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 but many people don't read the verse 13 because verse 13 talks about if you want the word of God to be that sharp, it's going to cut your throat open. It's going to take out. There's something that you're going to kill in your life. There's something that you're going to kill. The way you think, the way you've been running things, there's so many things in your life. You've got to kill it. You cannot just, okay, uh, it's okay. No, you've got to kill it. That's exactly what happened. You know, this, this guy lived right at the foot of Mount Helen. And people have been coming to him, including reporters have been coming to him. And this was one of the recordings. The reporter last met him two weeks before he died. Basically recording, and, and it's like, Truman, Mr. Truman, can you please leave this house? He said, no, I won't leave the house. He said, why? I've been in this house for so many years. I love the house. But you know what? But this is going to endanger your life. Do you love your house or do you love life? House or life? You know what? This guy, he said, Takes this mountain, I'm going along with it. I'd rather be dead for than to live without it. You know what he said? I stay in the house. He chose to stay in the house. And, and sure enough, two weeks later, it erupted, got into him, he died. God says, I want to save you. I want you to have life. Please, if there's something in your life that you know, that will make you die, you got to cut it off. What sin that you know right now? Sin, the only way you deal with sin is not, 
uh, okay, let me do better. Let me serve God better. Let me just uh, uh, praise God, read more chapters. No, the way you kill sin is you kill it. You deal with it, you kill it. There's only way. You got to kill it. You got to throw it away. You cannot even be. If, if you feel like you fall asleep at a certain time, do not let yourself be alone during that time. You got to kill it. This is how radical that God wants to, us to stay in the Word. Lastly, stay humble. It says in verse 12, Otherwise, when you eat and are satisfied, when you build, find houses and settle down, and when your herd and flocks grow large, and your silver and gold increase, and all you have is multiplied, then your heart will become proud. And you will forget the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Stay humble. Remember where you came from. How many of us really take the time to see where we came from before? Have you ever taken the time to look at that? Let me tell you, if you're a Christian, today, no matter what happened, no matter what challenges, no matter what difficulty you're facing, no matter what other brothers and sisters are doing to you, let me tell you, if you look back at who you were before, where you came from, you are in a much better place today. Be grateful. Stay humble. It is very important. You know, that's the reason in Deuteronomy 15, he said, you know, the reason I want you to remember because you were slave in Egypt. That's why I give you this comment today. The very reason Moses said I wrote this because I want you to remember where you came from and who you were before. Deuteronomy 9, verse 1, After the Lord your God has driven them out before you, do not say to yourself, The Lord has brought me here to take possession of this land because of my righteousness. You know the reason why I'm so blessed? Because I love God, I read Bible every day, I come to church, I never miss anything, is because of my righteousness. The very reason why I'm so glad I got promoted, because I am so wise and I'm so righteous. The very reason why I feel I'm better than you, because I know the Bible, because I can see things clearer, not like you, because I am more righteous. No, it is on account of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is going to drive them out before you. It is not because of your righteousness or your integrity that, that you're going in to take possession of their land. But on account of the wickedness of these nations, the Lord your God will drive them out before you. It is not because of you, but because of God. Because God is a holy God. He sees these people so wicked. For 400 over years, God given a chance, but you're so wicked, God says that's it. It is for that reason. And because he promised Abraham 500 years earlier, I'm going to give you that land. It is not because of your righteousness. Please remember where you came from. And then I'm going to close in verse 16. He said, he gave you manna to eat in the desert, something your fathers had never known to humble and to test you so that in the end, it might go well with you. You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this well for me. But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. I'm sad when I see how much God has been blessing someone, especially my brother and my sister, and yet they are not generous towards God and the church, it's really sad to me. Regardless of what happened, the very reason you have what you have is because God is the one that gives you that ability to make that living to be able to make the money. Don't forget, you don't produce that. You don't produce that at all. But sometimes we forgot. We thought it's because of us. That's why, you know, I don't want to give because, you know, I don't need to. Because How many of you are still generous towards God? How many of you are still generous towards God? And never say, I give my money. No, that's not your money. 
and my mind. It's God's money. This is God's church. I could see people easily spend money on other things, but to spend and give to God? And they have many reasons. They can come with many reasons. But the truth is this. They forgot. And don't, don't remember that God is the one that gave that ability for them to produce that. I want us as a church today to never forget God. Amen? So, stay grateful. Stay in His Word. And stay humble. Because God is a good God. And there's something that we need to somehow change and repent of. I pray that God will speak to each and every one of us here. But I love to see the church. They always remember God. And God will bring us as a church together to remember Him. And I hope this church, I know there's a lot of things going to happen. A lot of challenges going to be had. But at least in this church, we are known as a church that never forget our God. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you so much for all your blessing. I pray, Father, that today you help in each and every one of us here to stay grateful, God, to stay in your word. Take your word, love your word, trust your word, and help us, Father, to be humble and stay humble, God. We are so blessed in Singapore. Let us be the most generous people, Father, because of what you have given to us because of that ability that you give to us. Not because of our goodness, not because we are so smart, but because of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless every one of us here. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Harlem, for reminding us, telling us, don't forget God. Right now, we're going to partake communion together. And you know what, brothers and sisters? It is so easy for us, right, to forget about Jesus. So communion is a time for us to remember our Lord Jesus. Amen? So today, I thought I want us to remember our own personal encounter with Jesus. This is a picture that I'm going to show, yeah? It's a picture of Paul, his first encounter with Jesus. You read in book of uh, Acts chapter 5. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Paul then was called Saul. He was a very zealous Pharisee. In fact, he achieved a lot under the banner of a Pharisee. He had a great knowledge of the Old Testament. Probably he is very clear in what he's doing. So in this account, to Paul, it is a divine intervention. Because he heard a voice, right? His reply to the voice is, Who are you, Lord? And Jesus replied with this. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. I believe when he heard this voice saying that he is Jesus, Probably he went into a theological madness because how can it be? How can Jesus be the Lord? Because as a Pharisee, you know the claim of Jesus is the Lord is a blasphemy. In fact, because of this, Paul actually went around persecuting Christian believers who made this claim. So when Paul, when Jesus appeared in front of Paul, he probably shake him. You know, all along throughout his years, what he understand, he, he really reflect a lot. Is he really understand what he understand? How can Jesus be the Lord? And yet, Jesus died on the cross. Jesus' death and his restoration 
reaffirm that He's a Messiah. And you know what, brothers and sisters? This account transformed Paul. But I also believe no need to transform him. Because you've got to see his upbringing, his learning, everything, you know, his thoughts, his belief, all change. But Paul understands that he's undeserving because of what he has done. But yet God gave him a chance to know Jesus. And this is something, like what Harlem talked about, right? Something he never forget. In fact, in the New Testament, there's many accounts that he wrote about his conversion because he is so grateful, I believe, for what Jesus has done. You know what, brothers and sisters, we all have our own personal encounter with Jesus. I got baptized this month 33 years ago. <laughs> As a 17-year-old then, uh, I was full of ideal. Um, I think I know what I want to do. La. You know, a lot of dream. I remember I told myself, I want to be very typical, right? Rich, la, successful. So I can give back to the society. I thought I have everything figured out. Of course, I never thought about following Jesus. But as I know Jesus, everything changed. I know about Jesus that loved me. I know about Jesus that died on the cross for my sin. How can I go on live life just for my own? I belong to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, that changed me. Everything of what I believe in changed. But it had been a great life. There are many times there are doubts and challenges. But as I remember my conversion, it always gives me strength because I'm grateful that I can know Jesus. You know, this morning as we partake communion, brothers and sisters, I want us to ref- take some time to reflect. Okay? I want us to think about how deep your encounter with Jesus transform you. What we learn, we got to learn from the past. But how has it transformed us? It could be your conversion. It could be something happened to you that you experienced Jesus. But how has that transformed you? How has our encounter with Jesus continued to give us faith in this journey. So what we're going to do right now is this, as the background music continues to play, we'll take about a minute just to reflect on this. And let's allow the cross to continue to transform us. Amen. Okay, we're going to take communion together. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when He was betrayed, took bread. And when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We can both pray together. In verse 25, in the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Amen. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, thank you so much for giving us Jesus. No matter how sinful we used to be, no matter how ignorant and naive we are toward you, thank you so much for giving every one of us a chance to know you. Thank you so much. It's such a privilege even to partake communion, to remember Jesus because He died for our sin. And because of this, we can have a new life. We pray we can always remember what Jesus has done. As we continue journey through our life, stay grateful and stay humble. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Let's give a round of applause for the worship team. I'd like to really thank Harlem for the message. I think definitely there is so much for us to remember in our life. And sometimes we tend to forget some things that, is so, things that we have taken for granted easily. I think today's message has spoken to everyone of us here. Let us never forget God and His words. I hope that as we go back and as we, in our quiet times, as we purposefully, intentionally take out some time to read the scriptures to Deuteronomy, I hope that the thoughts, the ideas, the lessons will surface in our mind and help us remind ourselves the amazing, how precious God's words is. Amen. I also appreciate Calvin for helping us to remember our own life with Christ, that it is the motivation for our Christianity. Right now, I'd like to pray for the loved ones among us who are having challenging time. Join me in your prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord in heaven, Father, we come before you today with humble hearts. We acknowledge your power and your infinite love. We place our worries into your hands. Above all, please grant us the grace to acknowledge your will and know whatever you do, you do for the love of us. We ask for your healing touch to be upon the people around us, both physically and spiritually. We want to pray for our young sister, Emily Tan. We pray for the tumour to continue to shrink and for her hearing conditions to improve. We pray for Richard Teo. We pray that you will continue to watch over him as he responds positively to the treatment. We want to pray for Jess' dad's uncle Chong, who was baptised recently. We pray for his cancer to stop spreading and for him to grow in his reliance on you. God, please also be with our loved ones who are so dear, who also want to share the gospel with. We want to pray for Kenny Chen's mom. We pray for her to recover from a stroke, for her to gain back her strength and mobility, and for a response in conversation to be improved. We pray for Justin so that to continue to respond well to the treatment and be able to recover from his cancer. We want to pray for both Ching Hyu's parents. We pray for them to be stable in their recovery as they improve their immobility through rehab. We want to pray for Liana's dad to recover well from his recent stroke and that he'll be physically strong enough to study the Bible. Dear God, please watch over them, even the caregivers, Father, who are taking care of them, for it is, can be challenging. Grant them the wisdom and the skill and the passion. And lastly, we want to pray for our dear sister Berlin and her family as her father passed away in the past week. God, please grant the grieving family peace and solace during this difficult time. We commit all these prayers into your hands, and all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It is time for us right now to take up a contribution for the needy among us. Giving to the needy among us is a noble and generous act that reflects God's love and compassion. I would like to help us to ponder on the verse in Proverbs 19, verse 17. It reads, the one who is gracious to the poor lends to the Lord, and the Lord will repay him for his good deeds. This is a promise from God, that when we give to the needy, we are not really just giving to them, but to God. And God will never forget our generosity, and He will reward us in His own way and His own time. I want to invite you all to in this act of giving. In our church, we have a charitable fund that is used to help those who are struggling financially, who are facing hardship, or who are sick. It is also used to support outreach to the needy in the community and beyond. I ask for you to be prayerful, to consider how much you can give to this charitable fund, and to always give our cheerful hearts. So behind me, the, on the table on screen, will show how the money collector has been channeled so far. You may scan the QR code in the next slide using your bank app to give. Let's take a moment to do that. Thank you.
Amen. Thank you for your generosity. Right now, I'd like to invite a brother, Ethan Woon, a tall, handsome man. He's from Atlanta North River Church. Um, he's right now here to share about Hope Worldwide, Hope Volunteer Corps. Recently, he had taken over Nadine Templer uh, role to be the HVC Program Manager. Let's have Ethan. Hello, hello. Oh my goodness. Wow. Uh, hi, my name is Ethan Woon. As uh, he shared, that I, come, I uh, grew up in San Francisco, but I currently live in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, if you're looking at a map, Disney World, four fingers above. Uh, if we can go to the next slide. And just a little bit about myself. This is me and my family, actually just a couple weeks ago. Um, yes, my parents are only 167 centimeters, and I am 188. God is good. Um, and I, I wanted to show them just because I want to make it very, very clear. I am not here of my own accord. I am not here because I did something amazing. It's honestly because of my parents and my little sister being my family members that I am the man I am today and that I'm here today. Uh, and just a little bit more about me, I graduated from uni a couple years ago with degrees in accounting, social innovation, and entrepreneurship. Uh, I grew up volunteering my entire life and that was a blessing. I started a program when I was 15, uh, working with kids with special needs and teaching them how to play football. I know it's, I say soccer in America, but it's football. I'm in your country. And uh, when I went to university, helped start a Hope Worldwide entity there in an HVC where we worked with refugees. And I also had the opportunity to serve as a GSI. And now I work for Hope Worldwide as the HVC program manager. And so as the HVC program manager, um, it is very exciting. I am very, very, very excited. Because I have a special opportunity to see God transform people's lives over the course of two weeks. Not just the people who we're engaging with and who are serving, but at the same time, the people who are participating on the trip. Now, some of you guys may be wondering, what is HVC? If we can go to the next slide, that'd be great. Oh, I need to speak closer to this. HVC, these are global service learning trips focused on creating mutually transforming engagement through respectful and relational service. You see a lot of words, what does this mean? This means when we're coming to serve, we're not coming to be saviors. We're not coming to tell these people how to do their jobs. We're coming to people who are recognized internationally, recognized by the UN, uh, whether it be Legoland supporting South Africa, whether it be the embassy, US Embassy supporting Nepal, whether it be the government of the Philippines supporting Hope or Wide Philippines. We're going there to love, to support, and to learn from these people. Because I think they have so much to offer, and they do have needs and they do need our help. And you have the opportunity to be able to go today too. And so for HVC, if we can go to the next slide, we've done a lot of work over the years. And we've been, this is 30 years, this year, 30 years of Hope Volunteer Corps, of being able to send volunteers around the world to make an impact and to have their lives changed. We've had over 500 trips with over 15,000 participants. And this past year, we've had over 450 people go on trips representing 36 different countries. And this past year, we also had five new trips while featuring five new ones this year. So we're constantly trying to meet the needs around the world. And so, can we go to the next slide? This year, we have 17 different trips. You can see here, if you know the map quite well. Oh yeah, the next slide, that would be great actually. We have trips this summer, during the month of June and July. We have trips for all ages. Hope Youth Corps, Hope Volunteer Corps, and Hope Singles Corps. Hope Youth Corps are meant for people who are teenage age and campus age, so between the ages of 15 to 22. Hope Volunteer Corps is open to all ages. I had the blessing and opportunity to go with my family to Nepal uh, two years ago, and I promise you guys that was an awesome, awesome time. And then Hope Singles Corps, this is for people who are of single age, so at least graduated from university and they're working professionals. And so we have all these different trips because we understand you guys have different needs and you have different schedules, and we have purposely scheduled trips uh, during the winter break, because I understand sometimes you guys start school on January 2nd, and we're trying to make sure we're accommodating those needs. And now, you're, I'm talking about HVC, I'm talking about all this stuff, and I'm talking about all these different trips, and where you can go around the world, but you may be wondering, why should I go on HVC? Why should I go and serve all these other people? Why should I go and do this? If we can go to the next slide. I have three reasons listed up there. Sustainable impact. When you go on a volunteer corps, you're not just going there for two weeks and then just doing something and then, okay, when you leave, there is no point. 
When you go on these trips, you're making an impact that will last five to 10 to 15 years. We make it very, very clear to the people there that, hey, we're there to support you and we want to make it, we want to do whatever you guys want to do. What are the projects that you guys have in mind? What do you guys want to do? On, oftentimes what our site coordinators are saying is that in two weeks, because of Volunteer Corps, we're able to accomplish what we couldn't have in two years. So the impact that you guys make is powerful. Cultural exchange. Oh my goodness. Being able to, I'm, I'm a huge fan of food. I, I've loved the food here in Singapore. I was just in Malaysia before this. Oh my goodness, thank God for food. But I think all at the same time, as an American, I have an awesome opportunity to be able to come here and to sit at your guys' feet and to learn from you guys. To be able to see what family and community really looks like and what it really means to be generous and to give to, and be hospitable. It's a blessing to be able to go to a different community, to be able to sit at their feet and learn from them and see how much you have and how much you can learn from them. And lastly, lifelong friendship. This is a photo of me in uh, Lebanon with a few of the other people. Harlem, you might recognize someone. Uh, and these are people I have, thanks to these programs, I have met my best friends. Thanks to these programs, I have met people around the world who think like me, who believe in God like me, and who want to make a difference. That don't just want to like just go through the motions of life, but they actually, I'm like, I want people to know what I've done. I want God to know my legacy. I want to be able to go to God and say, I am proud. And God, look at what you blessed me with this opportunity. And lastly, I didn't put it up here. I wanted it to say that HVC is a very special opportunity where for two weeks, all you're thinking about is loving God and loving others. I'll be honest. Even when I work at Hope Worldwide, I'm stressed all the time. I'm thinking about bills, I'm thinking about rent, I'm thinking about what's next, 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 and it's easy to be stressed. Very rarely do you get the opportunity where you're purely just thinking about loving and serving others. And there is a joy and a fulfillment you find in that that you can never find anywhere else. And so for two weeks, that's all you're focused on, loving God and loving others. And so aside from HVC, we have one more program I wanted to talk about, the Global Service Internship. This is an awesome program. You guys may know it as GSI. It's a two-year internship program for young servant leaders, and we've expanded it to people under the age of 30. And these are people around the world who want to make a difference and lead and go and lead these trips. I understand that we have a, quite a few GSI here coming from Singapore, which is super exciting. And we train them in cultural competency and servant leadership. And I am extremely, extremely passionate about the GSI program because this connects what I believe are the leaders of tomorrow, the world leaders, not just leaders in their community, not just leaders in their country, but these are people who are around the world will be known in five to 10 years. And it's also, I'm also super biased because this is how I met one of my best friends, Daryl, is through this GSI program. So if we can go to the last slide. This is your QR code. If you guys are interested, please take out your phones and scan this QR code. But I just want to make it very, very clear what my heart is and what my desire is for you guys. I would love to see this church continue to be a church full of love, full of faith, and full of service. And I personally don't know any other better way to learn that and to learn how to fill up your home and to fill up your family than to go and serve on Volunteer Corps. And if so, if you're interested in HBC, please, please scan this QR code. If you have any specific questions, I'm really difficult to miss. Um, but honestly, if you can't find me afterwards, you can just email us, and I promise you I'm more than willing to talk and answer any questions. Thank you so much, you guys, for your support for Hope Worldwide, and thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you guys. Have a good day. Amen. Thank you, Ethan. So right now, I'd like to welcome some visiting disciples that are uh, here in our church today. Uh, please can you stand when I call upon you so they can welcome you. We have Chiran from Cambodia. Chiran from Cambodia, over there. Welcome, welcome. We have uh, Vladimir and his daughter from Ukraine, Odessa Church. Over there. Welcome. We have Kathleen Chen from India, New Delhi Church. Somewhere. 
Okay, so also don't don't forget Jordan, Sarah, Robert, and May, and Ethan with us today. Do fellowship with them, or maybe even take them out for lunch since Ethan loves the food. We have one announcement. Next weekend, the church will be having our church-wide retreat in Batam from Friday to Saturday, Sunday. So as such, on that Sunday, there will not be a, in, a morning English service. Next slide. We understand that there are brothers and sisters who are not able to make it on the retreat itself. So as such, we'd like to encourage you to join the Chinese ministry service in the afternoon on 17th of March at 3 p.m. to worship God together. So not rest assured, there will be English translation provided for this service. Amen. So let's welcome the worship team again and end off with one song. All right. Let's stand up together, brothers and sisters. Who's grateful for the Word of God just today, just now? Come on. All right. Give high five to the person around you. Hey, please be grateful for your, for your life, you know? God is good for your life. Let's go. And let's sing this song. Through you, I can do anything. Come on. I can do all things. For it's you give me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with you, God. Let's sing this out. I'm not gonna live but what I see. That's our faith, right? I'm not gonna live but what I see. Come on. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. With me, I know that you can do anything. Let's go, let's go, let's go. To you, I can do anything. I can do all things. For it's you who give me strength. Say, nothing is impossible. To you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. Living by faith, nothing is impossible. Wrap your hands together, come on. There's nothing is impossible with you. Come on, sing it out. I'm not gonna live by what I see. Through all the mountains and the valleys. I'm not gonna live by what I see. This is our faith. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. Here with me. I know that you can do anything. Let's go. To you, I can do anything. I can do all things. For it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Is impossible. Let your hands together. Let's go. God is good, amen. God is good, amen. Let's sing. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. We believe. I believe, I believe. See it all. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe in you. To you, I can do anything. I can 
Redeemer of days, for it's you who gives me strength. And that is impossible to you, blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Let's go! That is impossible to you. Sunday, brothers and sisters. God bless you all.